Hello there. Hello there. I think I heard something from the other room. No, just my imagination. All right, let's see here. Let's clean this up. No, I am hearing something. Hold on. What am I hearing? What am I hearing? I'm hearing things. I'm just hearing things. All right. All right, sorry about that. Welcome back. I am Carol Crafty Grandma, and today we are doing part two. No, there is something that is making noise. And it's in the room. Is it over here? No, it's not over here. All right, I guess it's just going to drive me crazy all night, all day. And because I can only hear it when I'm here. Hopefully you can't hear it. Okay. You need to stop. Go. Sorry about that. Uh, after yesterday's technical difficulties with the computer and the microphone, which is still being challenging, um, just being a little nosy. All right. So in part one, we did an unboxing, for lack of a better term. Um, we cut out all of the fabric that we needed. That's behind us. We did not cut out the fusible fleece because that's going to be determined, the size of that's going to be determined by the size of the fabric. We did the straps and attached the leather decoration. And then we did the middle piece to the bottom piece, put those together and did our top stitching. The one thing I was having problems with was getting my zipper pull on. The zipper pulls that I purchased are not, do not fit on this zipper tape. So I had to go back to the original zipper pull, which for the size of the zipper, I'm okay with that. Now, last night, as I was lying in bed, I thought about making little squares, diamonds, not certain which way, to go on the bottom of the bag where the feet go. And I think I am going to do that, which is going to add a little bit of time to it, so we may end up having to do a part three just to get everything done. I'm also going to add some heavy duty decor bond fabric to the bottom of the bag. Um, that way the bottom of the bag is nice and solid. Boy, I wish I knew where that sound was coming from. Is it here? And standing here, I still can't hear it. It's only when I'm standing right here that I can hear my, hear the feedback. So I'm not certain what's going on. Unless it's that camera. Ooh, let's try that. Is it this camera? No, because again, standing back here, I can't even hear it. Yes, I can. Where is that? Yes. 
Okay, let's try again. It is my phone. There we go. All right, no more feedback. Whew, that was going to drive me crazy. Not nearly as crazy as the cat was going to drive me, but we'll get there. So anyway, so I'm going to add heavy-duty interfacing to the bottom of the bag. I'm going to add some leather accents to where the feet are going to go on the bottom of the bag. Um, so that's going to cause a, a little bit of delay in stuff. We'll have to see how long it takes. I'm also going to see about adding the feet before I seal the bag up. I've never done that before. Usually I add the feet after the fact, but as I'm thinking about it, I'm only doing a quarter inch seam and the feet are going to be far enough in that I think I can do them before the bag is done. And I might have been doing feet wrong all this time. I might have been able to do this all along and just never did. So we're going to see how this works, do some things a little bit differently. Okay, right, so the next thing we're going to do is put the zip box zipper pocket in. Zipper box pocket. Said that wrong, sorry. So we need our little zipper. And we need to know... Okay, you can sit or you can leave. No, you can sit there or you can leave. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Thank you. All right. So we're going to need our close-up camera. So it says, take the front middle panel of your bag. And I determined this is going to be my back of the bag. This is going to have the, um, this is not going to have a zipper pocket in it at all. So this is going to be fully visible. And I like that because it's got the two bottles of wine and it's nice and, and some nice pictures there. This one, on the other hand, does have an area where there is blank, clear space. So I'm going to see... I'm, I'm not certain how far down the zipper pocket goes, but I'm thinking it's right about there, and we may do some adjustments to put it there, even if it's not. So, first thing it says to do, pick this, take this, and then it says, take the front middle panel of your bag, fold it in half, and crease to find the vertical center. Mark it, if you like, with a removable marker. So, I have a on pen and I have a square ruler. Let's see here which one do I want to use. This one's a little big but hey. Let's see here. How wide is this? It is ten and a half, right? It is ten and a half inches. Ten and a half inches. Half of ten and a half is five and a quarter. So at five and one quarter inches, we're lining up our ruler and we're putting in a line. So we know where halfway is. The main, oh, I'm going to need one of these. I don't need the big one now. I can use a little one. Measure down one inch on the outer canvas and make a series of horizontal marks with the right sides together. Measure down one inch on the outer canvas panel. Oh, let's see, is one inch where I want to go. So one inch down is going to put me right up here. And I think that's a little high. I'm going to go two inches.
Now, the zipper pocket, which is right here, is going to go somewhere around there. It's going to get folded up. And keep in mind, about two inches of this is going to be lost because this will become the bottom of the bag. And we still have a bit of room left here. So even if I wanted to go a little bit lower, I could. I, I'm thinking I'm going to go two and a half inches down. So the pocket for this bag is going to be lower. Well, two and a quarter. Yeah. All right. So two inches down is where I'm going to put the fabric. And I want to measure five inches, five and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, and a quarter. Now let's put another mark like that up here a little bit. Okay. In the middle of the pocket, let's see, the pocket is seven and a half. So uh, that would be three and a half. Three and three quarters. One, two, three and three quarters. That doesn't look right. Well, I guess it is. Okay. So here is the middle of the pocket. Does it, how far down? One inch from the pocket lining. So if we put this up here and go down an inch, where does that put the zipper? Puts the zipper just about exactly where I want it. So that's perfect. All right. Now, after we do all that, so the pocket lining is going to go down an inch, or the, the box is going to go down an inch. Let's get that drawn and from the center four and a half inches long so one two and a quarter one two and a quarter so we now have a line that is four and a half inches long centered exactly on the center of the pocket square and we're going to match it up to the center of the front of the bag. The depth on this box needs to be three eighths of an inch. One, two, three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to line it up That we do exactly four and a half inches. Okay. We still have to do halfway down, which is uh, there we go. Half inch on either side. Doesn't say. And this is how you draw a standard box pocket. What we're going to do is we're going to sew 
around the outside square, or rectangle. It's not a square, it's a rectangle. So around the outside rectangle, with both pieces of fabric, the exterior fabric and the lining. Then we're going to cut down the center and we're going to cut the angled lines and go just to the very, very corner um, without cutting the thread that we've stitched, but getting as close as we possibly can. And then we're going to flip everything inside out or right side out, I should say. If you have fabric for your lining that has a pattern to it or a right side or a wrong side, I don't. My fabric doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. What you are doing at this point is the pocket lining, this is the wrong side. It does not say. And I'm trying to think. Once it goes in, This is going to flip up, but it's going to flip up on the other side. So yes, this is the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. If you have a fabric that has a wrong side and a right side that you are using as your lining. And I want to line up. Well, first of all, I want to make sure this is down. I'm kind of looking through the box and seeing where the zipper is going to land because I want the zipper to land in a certain spot. I'm not as concerned about how far it actually is from the top or the bottom. I just want the zipper to land in a nice spot. So let's go right there. Now, did I get my center line exactly on the center line of the pot of the out exterior fabric and I did because there's a mark on the exterior of the fabric there okay so our center is exact now we want to make sure that our fabric is straight There we go. So now we have it all pinned up straight down the middle. So we're right on the middle. I've got it pinned in a couple more places so that we make sure the fabric doesn't shift or move around while we're sewing. And now we are going to go sew around the box. Now we have an option here. When I am sewing the box itself, I really like to use my applique foot. The applique foot has a really wide opening and a center line down the middle, and it's really blurry. Can we unblur? Not really. Um, if you don't have an applique foot, you just have a standard foot, don't worry about it. Just use your regular foot. It's not going to hurt anything. I like to use the applique foot because I can see exactly where I'm going. I have everything measured out. I like to put my foot down first so that I can make sure that the red line on my foot is lined up with the line for the square, a rectangle. I keep calling it a square. It's not a square. And you do want to do the stitch forward, stitch back, tack thing so that you can get a nice seal. And you don't want to start at the corners or on one of the short sides. You want to start on one of the long sides so that you can do that and you can get everything exactly where you want it to be. So follow your 
first drawn line, whichever direction you're headed, Go to the corner, turn. This is why I like my needle down position, because I can turn easily. Come on, thread. There we go. And we're going to go straight down again. computer. There we go. All right. So now we need to open up where the zipper is going to go. And I like to use little scissors for this. Fold it as best as you can in half. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and cut on the line as best you can and then cut down to the V and now here's the tricky part we want to cut at an angle from the V as close as we can without actually clipping the thread that's stitched. So see how we still have... It does look like we got there. It's just not moving as well as I thought it should. All right, and we do the same thing going in this direction. And then we go this way, and we repeat the process. Now remember I said we were going to flip it. So we're going to take all of our pocket and push it into that opening. And here's where I always get annoyed with myself. I need some pins. And this time, I am not going to use my big quilting pins that have a plastic top. These have glass tops to them. So the tip of this, the top of this is not made of plastic. It's made of glass. And you want, you want to turn it under so that the lining doesn't show. but you're not getting rid of too much of the exterior fabric. 
and I like to pin this before I press it so that I can get, I, I make sure I get the fabric the way I want it. And that's why I'm using the glass head pins because I'm going to be able to press all of this and not have to worry about my pin heads melting when I press this. And I'll be able to visually see if it worked or not. If I've got it pressed correctly all the way around. And like I said, this is the part that usually gets me because I usually end up doing it and it, I end up still showing parts of the lining and that always annoys me when I see it later on. Um, you can make pockets on suits for like this or jackets. It is a standard box pocket. This is nothing that is newly created or anything like that. It's perfectly or it, it's been a standard way of making things for years. Um, instead of putting a zipper in here, sometimes, like I said, it just becomes a pocket so it can be open. Lots of different options with this particular setup. And I do like to get it pinned a lot and as close as I can so I make sure all of my spots, you can't see the lining. And again, I still end up seeing the lining and getting annoyed, so. All right, let's check on this side. So you can kind of see the exterior fabric all the way around. And again, the pins can go on either side. We're going to end up taking the pins out after we press this. Okay, so now I need to press this. Before I can do that, I have to move the cat. I do apologize. Give me one moment. Here, baby. Mmm. There you go. All right. And the iron, eh, not too bad. Now keep in mind when you press this with the pins in, it's not going to be perfect because the pins are going to leave bubbles. Lumps, bubbles, a term of that nature. Not certain what term to use there. Um, so after we remove the pins, we're going to press this again. We're just getting it initially pressed to get it started so that the fabric doesn't move too much once we remove the pins. Let's see, did it get pressed enough that I can take these out? Not completely, that's why I freed up, okay. Pins are hot, so we're good. And 
now after the pins are gone, I press it again so that it's all flat. Because when you put the pin in, it goes in one side, down another, which kind of leaves a lump in the fabric, especially when you're using it on a seam. All right, so I have my hole. Now I am going to take my other, the other end of the fabric for the pocket and fold it up because I need to know where the pocket is going to be visible or when you unzip it I need to know where it's going to be visible and you'll see why in just a few minutes. I will bring you back to the zoomed in camera and it will make perfect sense why I'm doing this at this moment because you don't have to. The directions don't tell you to do this. I actually, I'm not certain if they even say anything about folding up the pocket at this point. Um, but I have a reason behind doing it. All right. All right. Zoom in. Close up. Close up. So you can see that the fabric has all been folded. They're sticking together, of course, there, because I didn't want them to. And there's an opening for the zipper. And you can now see where the back of the fabric is going to be. This is one of the labels I have, the only one I really like. One of these days I will get around to ordering some new labels. And I want that to be so that as soon as you unzip it, you will see the label. Now, yes, I could put the label somewhere else on the bag so that it was always visible. But honestly, I like it this way. I think it's cute. Keeps it out of the way. Doesn't make it god-awful in your face. All right. So before I close up this pocket, I need to sew my label in place. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, applique foot on. It's no big deal. And just like I did with the pocket, I am going to start on a long side and sew around. Okay, now we are going to switch to our zipper foot. And 
head back over and see what happens next. I guess I could have waited to switch to the zipper foot, but I knew we were going to need it next, so. All right. So here we go. Get that all lined up. And you can see that my label is now in there. But we're still open and free, so it's just going to go out of the way. Because the next thing we need to do is we need to put our zipper in. I am right-handed, therefore I prefer my zipper to pull from right or from left to right to open. It's just me. Most bags come that way. They open from left to right. If you are left-handed and you have always had problems with them being on the incorrect side for you, switch it up. doesn't matter. It's your bag. Sew it however you want. Now we're going to place our zipper under or in the box, not under the box, in the box. And this is challenging because you want to get the zipper evenly spaced in the box if you can. So you want the same number of inches from the zipper teeth to the top as from the zipper teeth to the bottom. And again, when you do use pins, the fabric gets a little lump in it and that can make it uneven all the way around. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it around because these pins are staying in while I sew. And so I want to make sure that they are straight and facing the correct direction so I'm able to pull them out as I go around. Now, for this particular activity, it does matter where you start and stop. Because, come on zipper. The zipper tape Why is the zipper being difficult? It was working fine. There we go. Okay. So the zipper tape here, you want to get as close together as possible. You can't actually join the feet, the tape, but you want it as close together as possible. And to do that, you have to have the zipper pull out of the way. And they are facing, the tent pins are facing the wrong direction. No, they aren't. They were facing the right way. This and then down. They were facing the correct direction. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to start on this side. I'm going to start around here with the zipper pull out of the way. So we're going to start somewhere around here on the bottom. We're going to go around, go over this part of the zipper tape because this is the open part and we got we want to stitch them down and as close to each other as we can. Then go up. As we go up, we're going to move our zipper pull out of the way, over and then back around again, probably moving our zipper pull out of the way multiple times. If you have the ability to knot your machine, your stitch, do that. If you don't, you're going to go back and forth on the zipper tape or on this a few times. This can technically be considered a top stitch because it is going to be visible and it is on the top of the fabric. So if you want to extend it, you can. When I do go around zippers, I do not extend my stitch length. I leave it at the shorter length because I like the way it looks. The other thing I do is I move my needle over so that it is closer to the edge of the fabric and I want my presser foot is going to follow along the fabric. So my needle, wherever it ends up, that's how the stitch width I'm going to get from the edge of the fabric. I have to take the pin out in order to sew. And when you do that, you get your zipper tape to separate. So I am holding my zipper tape as close together as I can, everywhere I can. So right here in the open area and down here where it's not visible at the top, on the top of the fabric. Do this carefully. You are going to be going th through the zipper teeth, so you want to be cautious and take your time while sewing. All right, one more stitch. Okay. Now I'm going to get this extra th piece of thread out of here so that it doesn't get in my way later. And pin comes out carefully stitch. All right, now I'm going to get my zipper pull out of the way and I'm going to move it to the other side. Come on. It's always awkward underneath the machine to try and move the zipper pull. it doesn't necessarily want to do what you want it to do. All right, and now I have another pin in my way, so we get the pin out of the way. Another pin. over the zipper teeth again. And now everybody's flat and straight. And if you pressed this well before you started, this last piece of the zipper is not too bad to do.
and then I am knotting. If you don't have that ability, do your back and forth stitch. Ah, that. We got a bubble. I knew something was going to go wrong. It always does. Just to drive me absolutely crazy. Uh oh. All right, I, you, I didn't do the zip. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. So it looks like I didn't have the zipper centered correctly. So the zipper tape is not caught in the stitching. And it's actually caught a lot over there. So yes, I did not do the center the zipper very well. So what I'm going to do is go back to the machine and stitch closer. My other option is to rip the entire zipper out and do it again. And if that's what you want to do, go for it. I am going to stitch and I am going to go back. Close the zipper. Uh, are we going to need to tear the zipper out? Let's go over here. spot but that zipper pull just wants to get caught every time. No, it's just the way I'm doing it. No, that's not going to work. So, here we go. Because I put way too much zipper tape on the top. And this is one of those places that since we're using zipper tape instead of an actual store-bought zipper, if you would like to use a longer zipper, this would be, so you don't have this problem, that's a perfectly acceptable idea. Um, or just pay closer attention to what you're doing, because I was... I thought I was, but apparently I was wrong. This canvas has really wide weave and it's hard to get the thread out. Let's see, can I do it that way? Yeah. There we go. Once you get it started, it's not too bad. It's just getting them started that can be challenging. Mm. 
Now down here where I made my attempt to fix, we're going to have a lot of stuff. Sorry. Stop vibrating. Watch. I do have to take this side out. Oh. Alright, so we've already zipped this. got over here and this we do have to take off from the top because it's not on the zipper well, careful not to pull the canvas Let's see, can I do it from this side without making too much of a mess? Because the cotton is better than the canvas. It doesn't, the cotton has a tighter weave. Canvas has a looser weave, which is why it frays so much. Um, This is where I knotted it. <laughs> you got to be careful when you're doing this not to tear your zipper tape or your fabric. Now, if, because I'm using zipper tape, if I do rip the zipper tape accidentally, I can just make a new zipper. If you're using a regular zipper and you rip the zipper tape, you can also use a new zipper, but you're wasting a little bit more money because you're getting rid of the zipper pull and everything. Whereas I'm just getting rid of the tape. cleaned up. There we go. This last little bit. Yes, if I hadn't tried to fix it, this would have been easier.
Let's look at the front. Make sure we have it all clean. cleaned up and we're back to where we started excellent where'd my little pins go so this time I'm gonna start making sure that the end is completely covered up still feels a little tight and there's still plenty up there so shift it down just a little bit more oh come on And there we go. This time we've got plenty on that side. Now let's make sure we still have plenty over on this side. zipper about halfway down. And we have room for our zipper to be pinned there. Excellent. So now we're going to try sewing it again. Remember, we want to do the end that is open first. All right, now we have to get the pin out of the way, which means fingers holding the zipper together. 
here and holding it together or pressing it together or whatever term you want to use on the end so it is nice and closed. <laughs> Not really. Not now. get this extra piece of thread out of the way and we're gonna see this is gonna take a while because my machine wants is telling me that I'm out of bobbin thread and I want to get this done without a break which means I need to just keep pushing the button telling the machine to not worry about it because I know this machine tells me I'm out of bobbin thread bef un well enough in advance that I can get through this stitching. Let's see how much bobbin thread is left. Oh, ooh, we were right at the edge. Just barely made it. But we made it. Because I knew, and I knew we would. All right, we will be winding a bobbin next time we go to the machine. Let's look at the mess we've made. When I say we, I mean me. So from the front, zipper opens and closes and opens and closes. Yep, the zipper works. We look on the back, the zipper tape is caught, the zipper tape is caught. All is right with the world. except our fabric is really fraying because we've been messing with it so much. All right, the last thing we need to do to finish off our pocket here is to sew the three open sides of the pocket. So up this side, across here, and then down. Oops, not that camera. That camera. There we go. And we're not going to need that. We're going to need our regular our quarter inch foot so that we get the right stitch width. And then I need to wind a ma bobbin.
right, now we only want to sew the pocket together, not the front of the fabric. So we want to get that out of the way. Make sure you don't get that caught. I didn't need to do that front and back thing. I just wasn't paying attention to where I was going and I s sewed off the side of the fabric instead of stopping at a quarter inch like I was supposed to. Now, we have a pocket. Voila, we have a pocket. There we go. Next, we're going to put the straps on. All right, we need the big pins. Measure in two and three quarters inches from each outer side on the top of the middle panel and attach a handle. So these are the middle panels. And it says to measure in two and three quarters inches. One, two, and three quarters. The other thing it tells me is to Uh, allow 3 eighths inch. Different patterns ask for different things. So these handles are going to go up. Here, let's go here. These handles are going to go up. So if I were to attach the handles this way, You can see where the leather is. Not where it well focused, but you can see where the leather is. All right, see where the leather is. Once you attach them and flip them up, the leather is going to be on the inside. That's not what you want. You want the leather to be visible once we attach them. So if we attach it with the leather on the outside, now when we flip it up, the leather is going to be on the top of the handle, which will be visible, which is where you want it. So two and three quarters inches in and three eighths of an inch over the top. So I'm lining up my ruler and I am lining up my handle. And I am pinning my handle more than once.
because I want to make sure it stays straight. And then I am measuring again. One, two, and three quarters inches in, three eighths inch up. Okay. Making sure our handle stays, doesn't get twisted or get turned in a different direction. Now we go to the other side, two and three quarters and three eighths inches up. Place our handle. Ooh. And pin the handle. out of the way and I'm going to get this oh, this one's not straight That's, there we go all right we're making sure everybody's straight at the top and squared up so there we go. There's one. And if this doesn't have enough going on already, we're going to add more stuff to it. Two and three quarters. That's not going to oh. inch up. Again, making sure you don't twist up your handles. That's the biggest thing when it comes to handles is not getting them twisted as you're attaching them. I am going to baste these handles in place. It does not tell me to do that, but I am going to do that because I do not want the pins in the way. With everything else going on, I want to be able to, to attach the, the next piece without having to worry about these handles. So I'm going to baste them in place. Does not tell me to do that in the book or in, on the directions, but it's a personal option that I am making just like I'm doing other things that I'm personally choosing. All right, sewing machines right there. Let's go over here. I'm gonna leave the pins over there because I'm not gonna need to remove these. Okay, so now I wanna keep everybody flat, straight, squared, whatever term you wanna use. And I'm going to change to my basting stitch. All that means is I'm going the widest stitch I have, or the longest stitch I have, not the widest, the longest.
That didn't work out well, did it? I guess it's a good thing I wasn't using that camera at that moment in time. And you just stay put. Ooh, nope, you're not going to. Ah, it appears that my tripod has decided to not work correctly. All right, so now I'm going to take all these pins out. Because as I've mentioned multiple times, when you use pins, you get little bumps. Um, the, fa the pins cause the fabric to bubble. Um, it's just a matter of the way it works. And now you can check and make sure that when the handle goes up, my leather is on the correct side. So that works. And then I do the same thing here. And again, leather's on the top. So we're going the correct way. And now we're going to attach the top panel. It says don't top stitch yet, but, but attach the top panel. So these are the top panels. I'm just trying to see where I'm going to put that one on that one and that one on that one. All right. So back to the machine. And we attach the bottom of the pattern that way. We're going to change it to a back to a regular stitch, not a top stitch. Not a basting stitch, just a regular old stitch. Everybody straight.
Now I wonder which side the top stitch is going to be on. Let's look. The top stitch is going to be on the middle panel. So we want to press our seam down so that the middle panel is where we are going to put our top stitch. We're just not doing it right now. At least that's what the directions say, just not right now. My guess is it wants the fusible fleece in before we do the top stitch. And I'm not certain I agree with that. Oh no, I see why they did it. We're going to do the top stitch all the way around. So it's con one continuous top stitch. I'm okay with that. When do we put the fusible fleece on? Attach the almost completed front and back panels to a piece of slightly larger style of bill and trim. Okay. And they use a certain brand of fusible fleece. That's not the brand I'm using, but They're not doing it because they want that, the uh, fusible fleece in there. They're doing it because they want one continuous top stitch all the way around. That makes sense. All right. Now, to press our seam. So I am going to be making some adjustments to this because of the fact that I want to see about putting the feet in before I sew everything up. Oh, and I want to put the extra interfacing in. Thinking of that, do I have pieces that are big enough? That might actually be big enough for both. And if it isn't, this most definitely is. And now we have our front piece. Okay, so here's where I'm going to skew off the beaten path a little bit. We are going to cut two inches off of the bottoms of these. We are going to do it so we can box up our square, box up the, our corners later on. I am going to do that now because I am going to put interfacing in here and actually let's put the interfacing in first. 
guess it really doesn't matter. Now that I think about it. But I do need to know where the bottom is. I do need to know that. But let's put the interfacing in first and then um, determine where the feet are going to go. All right, so I need it two inches wide. on either side. That works. So we're going to cut it out anyway, so we'll be fine. So I am attaching interfacing to my iron. Um, I'm attaching interfacing to the bottom of both pieces. The interfacing is two inches. Um, deep because we're going to have a box corner of two inches and we're going to cut off squares at the bottom of two inches. So the only piece of, so there's going to be interfacing just on the very bottom. It's not going to be on the sides. The sides are still going to be very loose and freewheeling, but the bottom of the bag is now going to be nice and going to be stiffer because of the interfacing. So part three is probably only going to be an hour long instead of two hours um, based on where we're at. We got a lot done today, even though I had to redo <laughs> the uh, zipper. Live show. That's what happens. Okay, so now... I'm going to put in where my two inch squares are on either corner. And the distance between those is just over six and a quarter inches. So I want to divide that by three-ish. So I'm going to divide six by three. We're going to skip the whole quarter inch thing. Six divided by three is two. So I want to go in two inches on either side-ish. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that's too close together. So I'm going to just go in one inch on either side. And one inch. And then from the seam, first of all, the seam is going to be a quarter of an inch. So we need to put that on there. And the bottom of the bag then becomes one and three quarters inches. 
So let's go with one inch in from the edge. Because remember, these bags are not totally stiff, but the bottom is going to be stronger. So that's where our feet are going to go. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. one inch in from either side and then one inch down. Okay, so I have figured out where my feet are going to go on the bag. And I want to use some leather to give them a little bit extra punch, for lack of a better word. And they're one inch wide. Let's see, if I cut it to be a one inch square, and then mark it at a half an inch, on both sides. And cut it. Is this what I was thinking of in my sleep? They're actually just half inch squares. I didn't think about that. Again, I was sleeping when I came up with this brilliant idea. I take a pin and go like this. Where's my other dot? And let's get rid of this piece that I cut because that was just stupid. I wasn't thinking. Let's go back to here and cut two inches. Now one inch. And a half. Actually, I made too many. I 
don't think those are too small. Yeah. We need them to be one inch. Where is my cutter? There's my cutter. So I need four one inch squares. There's one. Get you all moved in. Let's get this camera. Come on. There we go. No more falling. You need to stay put. So here are my feet. Here is my bag. I determined where the feet were going to go based on the bottom of the bag. I transferred those markings onto the fabric. And I am going to put this in a diamond pattern there. As I'm looking at this, that is too close to the edge of the fabric. I think. Let's see. It's going to be right on the... That means they're going to match up. No, not quite. There's going to be... Because there's going to be a quarter inch seam here. So I think this will work. Maybe I should make these into three quarter inches. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's get a little ruler. Well, let's look, just make sure how big is this going to be. So this is the foot. This will be on there, and then the foot will go in the center. I like it. I think it's neat looking. It's different. It's too much. Never mind. All right. We're just going to go with... putting the feet on. But we are going to put the feet on here. We are not going to wait until the end. So I need a cutter. Where's my other little piece? I like to have that underneath. And I am cutting from the canvas side because I find that canvas with its fraying is it works better if you cut from the canvas side. There's one hole. Yes. 
and I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press it and I'm not actually pressing what I'm doing is getting rid of these big blue lines that I drew so it's going to warm up the fabric a little bit and get rid of the big blue lines and I need a screwdriver All right, to get rid of the lines, it got rid of the lines. So, oh. no more big blue lines, but we do have our holes still. So we have our screws that go through the holes. There we go, and we have our presser feet or our bag feet. And the reason I started thinking about this last night was because you have to have you should have interfacing whenever you are. Um, putting on feet. Otherwise the feet can pull out. And I did buy these little washers, which I forgot to put on. Oops. To go on the screw. They really, I think, should have been wider than the screw head. And they are not. Thought I bought them the correct size, but I did not. And they're just standard from a hardware store type of washers. Okay. And usually I'm trying to do this once I've got the bag all assembled. So I'm liking the fact that I'm doing this in advance. It's much easier to do it on the fabric when it's still flat and it, not in bag form. So that's nice. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. I think the leather might have helped keep them more sturdy, but We're going to go with it as it is right now. And I do still want to use the canvas side as the side that I start from. So I want to get my marking, even though I, I'm going to have to get rid of it. I want my marking on the canvas side so that I can cut the hole from the canvas side. Did we get the hole through? Yes, we did. Okay. There we go. 
All right. Put the cutter away. Get a couple more washers. Couple more feet. Feet are on. So on our part three, we're going to start with attaching the fusible fleece to the bag. In my last bag, I did not use fusible fleece. As I've mentioned many times before, I don't typically use it. I wanted to use it in this just to see how it differed from using batting, cost-wise and functionality. Something that I'm thinking about right now with the fusible fleece is the pocket is going to be enclosed with the fusible fleece. Um, which means the fusible fleece is going to stick to the exterior fabric and the back of the pocket fabric. So I'm not 100% certain how that's going to work as far as will the pocket be loose? Is it going to be tight because it's been sealed in on the edges? I'm not certain. Um, so we'll have to see. I do like the fact that the stuff that's in the pocket is going to have the fleece between it and the lining and the bottles. So if you put a bottle opener in here, um, it won't be clanking against the bottles. Whereas if you had put the pocket on the outside of the fusible fleece, and then uh, the only thing separating the bottle and the pocket was the lining, which is just cotton fabric, um, you'd hear the clanking if you had something metal in this pocket. So I like the idea of it. I'm just curious about the functionality with the fusing because when I did mine, I only used regular batting. So it wasn't attached. It was sewn in at the seams, but it wasn't actually physically attached to the fabric. So I'll be interested to see how that turns out differently. Um, so we'll do the fusible fleece. We'll finish the exterior of the bag. Then we will construct the inside of the bag, which includes the center divider and then the sides. And we'll get the top of it taken care of. Um, actually, this goes on the inside also. This attaches to these two pieces at the top. So you'll see how that goes. Um, should, well, it, it actually probably is going to be a full two hour spiel now. Um, but We'll see you for part three. Don't forget, thumbs up, like, follow, subscribe, remind, whatever it is you need to do so that you never miss an episode of Carol Crafty Grandma and all of my fun and interesting activities, no matter what happens. Remember, we're always live.